Hello friends, Namaskar. As you may have heard that Honorable Finance Minister in her budget speech 2022 has talked about the concept of updated ITR that from the point of view of giving some additional time limit to the SSCs at large in filing the return, the government has come with a concept of updated ITR or in brief ITRU. So whether the concept of ITRU is a donor treat to the SSCs at large or not, a very important question which you may be interested to know the answer about. So through this particular video, I am trying to put up all the relevant questions and aspects which may come up in your mind to understand this concept of ITRU. To begin with, I will first put up the important questions which we are going to discuss through this video. What is the present process of ITR filing? This I will like to throw some light upon it so that you can understand, okay, this is the present system. And after knowing the present system, what is new in the concept of updated ITR or ITRU? So the next question will be the purpose of ITRU concept. What is the main intent behind this ITRU? What is ITRU? We will understand it technically with reference to the provisions of law. Who may file ITRU? So whenever there is a question that who may file ITRU, the another question would be that who can't file ITRU or in another word, I can say whether ITRU or when ITRU can't be filed. How many times ITRU may be filed? A very important question to be known in terms of its answer that, okay, how many times a person may file ITRU? How to file ITRU? Up to what time limit ITRU may be filed? And the time for tax payment of ITRU will be what? Means, for an example, you have first filed ITRU, then you may be paying tax. Or you first pay the tax, then ITRU could be allowed to be filed. We will see the answer to this question and how much additional tax will be payable at the time of filing ITRU. So let's see answer to all these questions one by one. Now let me first bring your attention on this point. What is the present process for ITR filing? See, you may agree with me and I know that most of you have this knowledge already in their possession. Say for example, assessment year 22-23 and that is the relevant financial year you may say 21, 22, which has just ended. Say you may be filing the return for the same by 31st of July, 2022. That is the regular date of filing ITR. Suppose if you could not file ITR as per section 139.1 within this date, and I am assuming you are not liable for any audit, then you will be allowed a time, extended time of 31st of December, 2022. So beyond this, you will not be able to file the ITR. Now, in recent past, you may have seen that Government of India is throwing too much of information towards SSCs at large because of the varied sources through which it is getting the information pertaining to SSC. Say, for an example, it could be AIS, Annual Information Statement. It could be TIS, which is a summary of AIS only, Form 26AS. And there are sometimes 143.1 related adjustment intimations which are being issued to the SSC. So sometime by the time SSC comes to know that something is left to be reported in the ITR, maybe genuinely or maybe with intentions. And then later, later the SSC is in worries or he is in tension that what to do. So this present process which allows a shorter time period of filing the return or revised return would get an extension with the concept of ITRU. That is you are going to get some extra time limit and rather a substantial extra time limit for filing an updated ITR or I may say correcting your mistake. So what is the present process and what is proposed to be done? This is a kind of uh, important point which we have to carry home through this particular video. So if somebody technically asks me that, okay, Mr. Bhatia, let us know what is the purpose of this concept of ITRU. I will try to answer in the language of the government of India only because in the memorandum to finance bill, the government clears the mandate behind a particular provision. And the provision in this regard is section 139, subsection 8A, which is a new insertion. And the memorandum of the finance bill says that this concept is to provide more time to the SSC to file ITR. If you have more time, then naturally you can evaluate your information and try to come out with some good tax liability to the government of India. 
motivating taxpayer towards the desired objective of voluntary tax compliance starting with filing of correct tax return government is making up mind that okay let's allow the assessees at large for ensuring voluntary tax compliance rather than we catching them and then they will be coming up with reporting of the tax liability the government wants to ensure additional revenue realization and facilitating ease of compliance to the taxpayer in a litigation free environment see what happens that when an assessment gets opened and then the there is a debate between ao and the assessee and probably if the assessee is not satisfied he will further go into appeals so the litigation process and the time to collect the right tax liability also enhances so government is saying that okay you do an evaluation of yours you do a voluntary tax compliance of yours we will collect extra tax liability from you and we are kind of making you free from the worries of any kind of penalty and prosecution consequences because you have followed the concept of updated itr or the concept of itr u so let's come on the main point what is itr u that is updated itr is what so as you know that i at the most of time try to bring in the bare act provision before you for a better understanding of law so i would like to read here the provision of section 139 subsection 8a which is a new insertion by the finance act 2022 in the income tax act 1961 this i'm going to read and as i'll read i'll take some pauses to understand more clearly this provision any person any person means all the person may be you are an individual you are a hf you are a corporate entity you are a trust any person may file updated return any person whether or not he has furnished a return under subsection 1 or subsection 4 or subsection 5 what is subsection 1 that is an itr which is filed within due date what is subsection 4 an itr which is filed with belated concept and what is subsection 5 where a person has filed revised return so may be you have originally filed an itr whether in time or belated may be that itr has been revised or may be you have not at all filed itr you have the liberty to opt for this itr u option so i read it again any person whether or not he has furnished a return under subsection 1 or 4 or 5 for an assessment year here in referred to as relevant assessment year may furnish may means the assessee has an option department would not force you to file updated itr it's your call if you want to take a call you may take this if you don't want to go into this then you may drop this idea may furnish an updated return of his income or income of any other person in respect of which he is assessable under this act now this is very important thing say for an example in a particular case mr x has died and his legal heir is mr y and the normal due date of filing return for the relevant assessment year including belated return has expired now why wishes to file now the return of mr x after expiry of 139 for time limit that is belated return time limit for the relevant assessment year. can he do so on behalf of x yes sir he would also be allowed to avail the concept of itr u benefit so in respect of which is assessable under this act for the previous year relevant to the assessment year in the prescribed form verified in the prescribed manner setting for such particular as may be prescribed at any time within 24 months from the end of relevant assessment year so what is important here to understand that government is giving you 24 months from the end of relevant assessment year to file updated return so if i am saying 24 months from the end of relevant assessment year that means that from the end of financial year you get 36 months from the end of relevant financial year so 3 year substantial time limit being given to the assessee so that he can evaluate she can evaluate understand what is my final tax liability and accordingly they should come up front on their own to file an updated itr and to seek necessary relief from the department to summarize my point again which i have carried from the previous slide who may file updated itr any assessee whether individual or non individual so you are an individual or you are a firm you are a company you are allowed to file updated itr any assessee whether audited or non audited audited are you audited or you are non audited in both the cases you are allowed to file updated itr and any assessee whether resident or non resident a very important point sir sometimes non residents are seen not filing itr in india because they feel that they need not to file itr they have certain apprehension which are having some genuine causes behind them. 
and i just keep on suggesting that if you have investment in india please keep on filing your return of income even if it is nre interest that is my suggestion and this time i have seen number of nri clients have received 148 a notices or 148 notice for non filing of return now suppose if they also want to file updated return can they do so the answer to this question is yes sir even they are also allowed to do it so filing of the updated itr if you see for the assessment year 22 23 would be possible up to 2 year from the end of relevant assessment year that is 31st of march 2025 or say as on date if somebody comes to me and he says mr bhatia i wanted to file itr for the assessment year 2021 and as on date i want to do so can you do it for me i can say yes sir up to 31st of march 2023 you may file an updated return whether you are liable to audit or not in all the cases you are allowed to do so so this is an important takeaway through this understanding now let me put up my point in form of example once again for more clarity and i am going to do it for both of the assessment year that is 2021 and 21 22 because for both of these years there was query in the mind of assessees that sir we have heard that we may file up to 2 year from the end of relevant assessment year for here and up to 2 year from the end of relevant assessment year here so these dates have not expired so people were in question they were asking that whether we may be able to do it onwards 23 24 assessment year or we may be able to do backward also my answer to this question is sir that cbdt rule which is framed in this regard is very clear that even for the assessment year 2021 and 21 22 you may file updated return so that's a kind of benefit which we may get now let's say if i put up an example that for this assessment year the last date because of corona extension was say 31st of may 2020 and now an assessee comes to me say on 10th of june 2022 and he asks me mr bhatia can i file my return on this date updated return i would say yes sir suppose he comes to me on 10th of june 2023 then my answer to this person would be no because here two year from the end of relevant assessment year had already expired which would expired on 31st of march 2023 but if he wants to file on 10th of june 2022 yes sir it is possible similarly for the assessment year 22 23 the last date is 31st of march 2024 so if somebody comes to me on 10th of june 2022 i may say yes sir it is allowed no issue many assessee have started asking this particular question that since the last date has generally expired in non audit cases on 15th of feb 2022 so suppose on 10th of june 2022 if somebody wants to file updated return whether it is possible yes sir it is possible and similarly suppose if i extend the date by one year 10th of june 2023 yes sir it would also be possible then but an important aspect which you will take care about here is okay if we are going to do do this here then what is the additional tax which is payable that is also a very important question which we will discuss further technically it is very important for all, all of us to understand when updated return can't be filed if updated itr is a return of loss say for an example the income tax loss is if you have losses under the head business profession or under the head other sort and you want to carry forward the same then you need to file the return within 130 and one time so suppose if somebody could not file a regular return in 130 and one time limit and he says that okay now i am ready to file updated return would i be available to carry forward the losses the answer to the question is no similarly if updated itr has effect of decreasing the total tax liability determined on the basis of return already furnished under subsection 1 or 4 or 5 so if you want to decrease your tax liability you can't do it by updated itr similarly if the result of updated itr is in form of refund or increasing the refund which is due on the basis of already furnished itr then can you do that the answer is no so the refund claim suppose for an example a person is entitled to claim some 35000 rupees of refund and he is the person who has not filed an itr at all so down the line after the expiry of normal time limit that person feels that okay now i am within one year from the end of assessment year time limit since i did not file an itr previously can i file it now since that person is claiming a refund 
the government of India is saying, no, sir, we will not allow you to file updated ITR. So, technically, I may say, updated ITR is not a two-way concept. It is a one-way concept. You may be a bit puzzled that, okay, what Anu Bhatia is trying to talk to us. One-way means that this return would go only in favor of revenue. That is department, not in favor of SSC. Then you would say, what is the meaning of filing an updated ITR? Sir, still there is meaning of it. What is the meaning, sir? Suppose if you don't file an ITR and tomorrow an assessment gets opened, you will be subject matter of penalty under section 278. That would mean if such income which you have not reported was underreported, you are going to pay 50% of tax as penalty. And if that will be treated as misreporting, you will be liable to pay 200% of the penalty of the tax amount. So meaning thereby that non-compliance is a very costly affair to the SSE when he gets trapped into income tax net. So it is better that you do the compliance on your own by way of filing updated ITR rather than keeping mute. So I see for those persons who genuinely or because of some genuine reason or maybe some intentions also could not pay their due tax liability, the updated return concept, even if this is coming up with a concept of additional tax payment, would be a beneficial option in my opinion. Let me technically further also discuss who can't file updated ITR where in the case of a person a search is initiated under section 132 or 132a of income tax law or where a survey has been conducted in the case of such person or where a notice has been issued to such person under section 132 or 132a to the effect that any money, bullion, jewelry, valuable article thing is seized or requisition which pertains to him. Where a notice has been issued to the effect that any books of account other documents seized or requisition under 132 or 132A pertain or pertains to such a specific person. Then if for the relevant financial year for which such search is conducted, where a survey is conducted or for the relevant financial year some material is not brought on record, then for that year the SSE would be barred from filing updated return. There are further more categories which I would like to add for your knowledge sake that when updated ITR can't be filed. Now suppose for the assessment year, relevant assessment year, the assessee wishes to file the updated return for 22-23. But before he files updated ITR, department has issued him a scrutiny assessment notice under section 143-2 of income tax. Now he will be totally barred from filing updated return. So if you want to file updated ITR, the best time is that okay, no departmental assessment, reassessment, recomputation is pending against you. If it is pending, then you can't file updated return. Similarly, where the EO has information in respect of SSC in his possession under Foreign Exchange Manipulator Act 1976, Prohibition of Binami Property Transaction Act, Prevention of Money Laundering Act, Black Money and Imposition of Tax Act, and such information is communicated to the SSC prior to furnishing of ITRU, then in all such cases, the SSC will be barred from filing ITRU. We are the information obtained under section 1990. Sir, what happens that government of India signs bilateral agreement with other countries. So say under bilateral agreement that is DTA, the government of India has got certain information pertaining to the assessee. And such information is shared by the department with the assessee. Then based on such information which now you have got, you think of that, okay, let me file ITRU, that option is not allowed. Similarly, we are in the case of an assessee, some prosecution proceeding are initiated under chapter 22 then that person would also not be barred from filing ITR. And if there is any other category which CBDT, that is on behalf of government of India, CBDT notifies a particular person not eligible for filing updated return, then they would also be barred from filing updated return. How many times an assessee may file updated ITR. Kitni bar ek vyakti, how many times a person may file updated return? May, I may try to answer this question. In this uh, context, say for an example, for the assessment year 22-23, I have filed updated ITR. Then again for the second year, that is 23-24, I want to file updated ITR. In my opinion, it is possible. The other question is, say for an example, 21-22, X has filed updated ITR once. Now he want to file for the same year 21-22 updated ITR, the answer is no. So for one assessment year, you may file updated ITR once only, not twice, thrice or so. But this would be possible that for one year, I filed regular return, then I filed revised return and now I want to file a 
an updated return under 139.8a, that may be possible, no doubt about it. So clearly speaking, I would like to quote that for one assessment year, updated ITR may be filed once only, not twice, thrice or so. Only once you can file updated ITR. Next question is whether tax payment to be made upfront or it may be paid after filing ITRU. See, it would have been interesting answer if I could have said that, okay, you first file your ITRU that is updated ITR and then if department accepts that ITRU, then you should be allowed to, you should be asked to pay the tax and interest or maybe additional tax. But the answer is opposite, sir. The ITR should be accompanied by a proof of payment of tax. So once you are wishing to file ITRU, before you upload your ITRU, there has to be a proof of payment of tax which should be duly provided in the ITRU. So you have to first pay the tax, interest, additional tax, then only you will be allowed to submit your ITRU, that is updated ITR. How much is the additional income tax payable? A very interesting question which, which everybody would be interested in knowing answer to this question. And it is answered in this context, if the ITR being filed up to one year from the end of relevant assessment year, I'll put it up through example also, but for time being, you understand it in form of theory that if you are filing updated ITR within one year from the end of relevant assessment year, then law says you are supposed to pay 25% of the aggregate of tax and interest payable. Now, government is not happy with you paying 25% of tax liability. Government is saying you will pay 25% of interest also. Rather, it is first time, if I am correct, I am understanding that on interest tax being levied, interest is levied on the tax, sir, but in the updated return concept, the government was not pleased to recover the additional tax on the tax amount only. It said, no, no, we will recover even on the interest amount. And mind you, my dear friend, interest is a fluctuating figure which keeps on enhancing and it is compensatory in nature. So government of India should have thought about levying tax on the interest, but it has levied. So whatever the provision is, that is my duty to explain to you. So government is saying you will pay 25% of the aggregate of tax and interest as additional tax determined in subsection 1 or 2 as the case may be. If such return is furnished after the expiry of time available under subsection 4 or 5 and before completion of the period of 12 months from the end of relevant assessment year. So if you are filing after the expiry of regular time limit of 139.4 say billeted, but you are filing up to 12 months from the end of relevant assessment year, then you are supposed to pay 25% of aggregate of tax and interest as additional tax. But what is the benefit of doing so? You will probably save yourself from levy of any kind of penalty and from initiation of any kind of prosecution pertaining to short payment of tax liability. Now suppose if somebody is filing the return even after the expiry of one year from the end of relevant assessment year but up to two years from the end of relevant assessment year, then the additional tax will be 50% of aggregate of tax and interest payable as determined in subsection 1 or 2 as the case may be. If such return is furnished after the expiry of 12 months from the end of relevant assessment year but before the completion of period of 24 months from the end of relevant assessment year. So if you are doing it within one year, then you are paying additional tax 25% on the tax plus interest amount. And if you are doing up to two years, then you will be paying 50% plus of tax plus interest as additional tax liability. So this is how your tax liability for updated return would be determined. I will try to put it up through an example here. Now suppose if I want to put up this thing through an example for the assessment year 21-22 if a person has already paid 1 lakh rupees of tax liability in his regular return under 139-1. Now because of certain information in his possession he says that okay now I need to file an updated return and he comes to you on 10th of June 2022. So by this day already the return filing due date has expired but he is wishing to file an updated return. Suppose in that updated return, he wishes to pay 50,000 rupees of the amount of tax. On this 50,000 rupees, some 5,000 interest is also payable. So how much will be the additional tax? Additional tax will be 25% of 55,000 or I may say 25% of this and 25% of this. So it becomes 12,500 
plus 1250. So he'll be paying 55,000 plus 13,750 in compliance of this updated return concept. Suppose if this person were doing it by 10th of June 2023, then in that case, if the other figures are same, then we could have said 50,000. Interest might have changed by that date from 5,000 to 10,000 because the interest keeps on changing according to the lapse of time. So then 50% of this, 50% of this, so that would mean 25,000 plus 5,000 plus this 60,000. So what this person would have been paying? Original tax 50, interest 10,000 and 30,000 being the amount of additional income tax. So this is how this person would be liable to pay the updated return related additional tax liability. Again, I am trying to clarify, sir. Those people, those assessees would be interested in this updated return concept who feel that they should get rid of any kind of tension pertaining to the income tax assessment being opened up the, against them in future. They are also, there only, they will find it useful to do it. It is also my duty, my dear friends, to clarify, to let you know that, okay, what is the relevant income tax rule and notification in this regard? The relevant rule is Rule 12 AC, which clearly speaks about that you may do it. Updated return may be done for the assessment year 2021, 2022 also. And CBDT in this regard has issued a notification, number 48 of 2022, which is dated 29th of April 2022. Uh, in this notification, there is a ITRU that is ITRU format also uh, provided. I will make a separate video on the topic for the benefit of all in the coming days soon. So I know my dear friends that you must be complaining that Mr. Bhatia, it has been quite a long video which you have prepared on the topic. But my dear friend, there were number of questions pertaining to updated ITR or ITRU which needed answer in one shot. So I tried to be uh, that way clear on the concept and I will again say that I will be coming up one more video on the discussion of the ITRU related form soon. So thank you very much. Till then, Jai.